it's Frankie Lou. I'm here at the edge of the Grow Together homestead where I'm harvesting rose hips today. These are not ones that I'm going to use for teas and culinary purposes. I have whole videos about that. These are ones that I'm going to use to harvest for a really nice light facial oil that's nourishing for aging skin like mine. And um, I'm almost out so it's perfect time to do it particularly as we had a first frost here already. And so I'm out here gathering some up and once I get some together I'll take you back inside and we'll talk about why we want to use it and some other little tips to help you give it a try if you're thinking of doing it yourself. Okay so we'll see you soon. This is what we're looking for here. These are beautiful rose hips. They're nice and juicy but you can see they're a little wrinkled and that's because they have had their first frost which is one of the things we want to look for. Well, they're actually better for harvest once they've been through a cold frost. And we've had a few frosts out here despite this wonderful weather, so it's a perfect time to pick them. Okay, so we are back inside now. A couple little precautions before we get going. Before you decide to do something like this, it's really, really important that you ensure that you're not sensitive to the products we're using. I'm going to be showing you a way of making this with absolutely all natural ingredients, but some people do have inflammatory responses or allergic responses even to the most natural ingredients. As with any new cosmetic or moisturizing product that you'd use, before you slather it on your body, do do a test spot to ensure that you're not having an inflammatory response to this product. Some people do inflame with rose. It's just a natural response that some people have. And as any time that you're trying something new, don't go hold to test it first, okay? Because you could cause yourself to break out. Also, when you're ingesting something new like rose hips, you do want to do that in a small portion to start because you don't know that you're not going to have a negative response to it, okay? So just my little thing here before we get started. Please do, if you do create this wonderful oil, which I love myself, make sure you're not going to have an allergic or inflammatory response to it by testing it in a small area first. There you go. Okay, so let's get started. Now we've collected a nice batch of rose hips. I've started taking off the stems and the, um, the tails here. I'll show you. You want to make sure that you've removed any stem pieces and also this this little bit here at the end, okay? I'm gonna be placing them into a really nice fine sieve that I'm gonna use for rinsing them. I wanna make sure that I'm removing anything that might be not so great <laughs> to be putting on my face later, right? Like, think about it. If you're gonna be using this as a facial oil, you wanna make sure these are nice and clean, but you also wanna make sure that they're nice and dry once you have cleaned them. So I'm finishing that up there, taking the last few off. I've got them in a really nice, fine metal sieve and I'm going to give them a good rinse. Well this is a cosmetic application you know you don't want to be putting anything nasty on your face. That makes sense right? So what I'm doing is I'm pouring this onto a, a tea towel. I'm using another tea towel to sort of dry them out. I don't want to have a lot of excess fluid in the mix I'm going to make because that's going to add contaminants as well. So I want to make sure these are nice and dried out. So I've got them, basically I'm rolling them between two tea towels. Get a good and dry. So far the, ex the special equipment that we've been using has been a gathering bag, a fine metal sieve. This is kind of essential though. If you don't have one of these in your kitchen yet, I honestly, uh, I can't stress enough how much I use this. This is a daily use. It's, it's really a powerless food processor, right? Like, it's one of the best things that we have available for both food and medicinal purposes, okay? Like if you're gonna be foraging, if you're gonna be making your own food, get yourself a mortar and pestle. I've got a lot, okay? <laughs> I have several of them. This is one of my favorites because it's a really good, big, heavy one, and it has a rough surface, so that makes it really, really good for um, mixing my things in. I'm gonna place all my lovely rose hips in there. They're fun and decorative, nice to have around your kitchen. People think that you're kinda, of, you know, it, it gives you a little culinary um, credentials if you have one of these things, right? 
Okay, so I've got all of my rose hips. All my rose hips have been washed and they've been rinsed. And now I'm going to give them a good grind. I will add some really nice light grapeseed oil. Okay, I I do like grapeseed oil as my carrier oil for all of the rose hip goodness because I find that it is lighter. I, I find if I put anything olive oil or coconut oil based on my face, it just doesn't absorb. As a celiac, I have super sensitive skin that also has a really high inflammatory response and I find that the grapeseed oil really, really works for me. So I'm gonna pour that in. I'm gonna start mashing away and I'll show you that in just a sec. Don't pour it all in there to start. You just wanna start with a little bit and then we're gonna pour the rest in when we put it into the sterilized jar. Okay, so we're gonna start mashing that up now. And if you haven't used a mortar and pestle before, it's really quite fun. <laughs> and I really do suggest that you get one because it's very satisfying to be doing this by hand. See how pretty that is? You just want to keep mashing away until you've basically crushed open the majority of your rose hips. I've seen lots of methods for making rose hip oil, which involved using, um, say, high heat, like in a slow cooker. A slow cooker might not seem high, but it is um, actually in terms of a cosmetic purpose, you could, you're you actually degrading the oil a bit when you heat it up too much. So this is sort of my method of making it a little bit faster, reducing the heat a bit, and I'm gonna have a product that I can be able to use in as soon as two weeks and as, as or if I feel really patient, but since I'm almost out, no, I'm not gonna be patient. Um, in about a month's time. So two weeks to four weeks is how long I want this to infuse once I've prepped up my oil here and I've got it heating. So you're wondering, well, if you're not using a slow cooker overnight or whatever, what are you using? What I've been using for most of my infused oils is actually this. It's a handy dandy ger germination tray. It has a low temperature it doesn't ever allow the oil to get too high. I can place it on a counter and leave it for a couple of weeks. It's not using a ton of energy. It's very, very low grade. And I do this with a lot of my infused oils. I'll basically create something that I'm gonna sit on there for a couple of weeks, strain, and then I'll use. Now, something else to keep in mind. I do not leave my infused oils like this just sitting on my counter. If you think about it, you're introducing a whole lot of organic matter into your oils. And it's the same way you would with say a salad dressing. Do you keep your salad dressing sitting on the counter? No, you keep it in the fridge. So I actually, once this product is done infusing, I will keep it in the fridge. And I find that it keep for a good year that way. Okay. All right, we got a really nice mash going on here. I think I've got it just about prepared. So I'm gonna go over and get myself one of my sterilized jars. I'm always thinking about how I can reduce contamination. And when you're placing something on a warm mat to sit for a few weeks, the last thing you need is a jar that isn't clean to start. You're asking for trouble if you do that. So it's a really, really good idea to make sure that your jars have been fully sterilized. I'm keeping them warm in my oven right now before you start that infusion process. That makes sense, right? Otherwise you're basically just growing mold. We don't want to be doing that. So I'm going to go get that. Let's see. I think I got enough to make a big jar actually. I find that I use when I am creating one of these infusions, almost equal parts oil versus the medium that I'm infusing. Okay, so I've got my lovely rose hip oil now that's been mashed into my, mashed with my mortar and pestle. I'm gonna pour that into, ah, <laughs> pour that into a nice jar. 
nice sterilized glass mason jar. I want to avoid touching this with my hands as much as possible because we are filthy creatures as human beings. Okay. And I don't want to, um, I don't want to add my own bacteria into the brew. As you can see here, it's very beautiful, isn't it? I um, have got this about half full with the rose hips that I've mashed up into the grapeseed oil. I'm going to top it up with the remainder of the grapeseed oil. There we go. Okay, so that's all topped up. I'm going to put a nice sterilized lid on this. I'm going to go plug this mat in downstairs where it's nice and, and dark. And I'm going to let that infuse for two to four weeks. Okay, I know it's hard to be patient. Once that two to four week period has gone, once again, these are awesome, okay? This is a great medium for straining out your rose hips out of the oil. The oil will take on a nice rosy color and a beautiful smell. That's all that nutrition that's in those rose hip oils infusing into the oil. Tons of antioxidants, so that's once, I, once again, great for aging skin and um, if you strain it through this and then I would suggest that you place it in a jar that you're going to sit in your fridge. You want to use that if within a year. If you're storing it beyond a year it's probably going to lose a lot of its um, beneficial components over that time and honestly you don't want it to go rancid. You don't want to be putting rancid oil on your face right? So. Um, here we go. We have lovely oil. It's, I'll, I'll share pictures in two to four weeks once I have got this all strained up and beautiful and ready to go. But I hope you'll give it a try. Honestly, um, I don't use any other moisturizer on my face and haven't for several years now. And it's, it's really been a benefit to me because A, it does cost less to do this than buying something crazy expensive at the store and I find that it is good for my skin. So all those antioxidants and all those vitamins that are in the rose hip oil are great. Please do remember we aren't creating essential oil here. We are creating an infused oil but if you use a good medium like a really really nice grapeseed oil, olive oil, coconut oil depending on your skin type, I think you'll find that you enjoy this and I hope you give it a try. So Hope that was helpful. Please do stay tuned if you want to see more of our homesteading hacks around here. Please do subscribe if you're interested in some of the stuff we got going on around here, like our recipes and our crafts and our gardening tips. And as always, I hope you'll take this chance to grow together today. Have a good one.